what is a GPX file? It is a good question. It is a question I get asked um, quite a bit or some variation of it. What's a root? What's a track? What are the elements of a GPX file? And uh, in this video, I am going to explain what a GPX file is in layman's terms. I'm kind of going to break it down for you so that you could work with GPX files, know what's going on, know when to choose a route, when to choose a track, show you some tools that I use to work with my GPX files, and um, hopefully give you a better understanding of creating GPX files so that when you're planning a hike or planning some kind of a adventure, uh, you can create a GPX file and know what it is and know how to use it confidently. So uh, let's dive in. All right, so at a very basic level, a GPX file is simply a file that contains uh, information for a GPS, whether that's saved information or information you're gonna use in the future, whether you're opening it on a GPS unit or a computer, you can do all of those things. And the three kind of building blocks are waypoints, routes, and tracks. And I'll talk about those in detail, but that's what a GPX file is conceptually. Now, physically, a GPX file is just a text file, and you can open it up with any text editor. But before we dive into these computer codes, I want to show you kind of like a conceptual um, equivalent that I did and just a, a word processor document. Um, really, you can think of it as a bolded list within a document. Here I have like trip to Mount Whitney, my plan, which is the route, is the hike to these three places. Some points of interest along the way, which you can think of as waypoints, are these items here. And my actual trip, the thing that was recorded here, 5 a.m. at the trail, 6 at Lone Pine, this is the track. So conceptually, this is really the type of data that you have in the file. And you can see that the this file is a bolded list. I have these items which are indented from plan. So these are sort of the children of the plan. These are the children of points of interest. And if you look at the actual GPX file, you can see we have waypoints. That's the plan. They're indented from the GPX file. I have a track here. And don't worry about what these are. I'm going to talk about this in detail in a second. But this is indented. So these are all children of the GPX file. Now, this GPX file is a text file. You can open it with any text editor or word processor. It's usually not the best tool to open it in because um, you know it's nicer to have a map and be able to draw on a map. And I'll, if you go to the corresponding article for this at Hiking Guy, I have a full list of free tools that you can use to you know, manipulate and create and do all kinds of things with GPX files. But just know that at its very base, it's really just a text file and it's organized in the same way that this is organized, where you have a hierarchy of indentations. Now, if you open a GPX file and it's not pretty like this, sometimes a program will take all of the white space out. It's called minifying uh, to make it a, a smaller file. Um, but I have a tool listed on the article where you can go and make it pretty like this. Now, the last thing I want to cover before I get into things deeper is that a GPX file is written in a language called XML, which is um, really just a series of tags that uh, contain the data. So if you see here, WPT and forward slash WPT, those contain information about a waypoint. WPT is a abbreviation for waypoint. And if we go down here, you'll see, okay, here I have TR, K track, and I have things that are children of that. You can see this track is a pretty long one. I have things that are children of that um, that you can see here, and you can see it all ends with GRK. So this is just a language for marking up your data within the file. Um, and the way that you do this, it's a standard, um, the GPX is a open standard that is used by almost everyone who does a GPS unit or a program on a smartphone or a computer that, um, that uses GPX or that uses data like this. And you can see if you go to this page here, I have a link to this on the website, you can see all the different companies that use uh, the GPX format. It's pretty much everyone. If you have a GPX format, um, you can transfer 
your data between units, again, between computer, from a computer to a unit, vice versa, whatever it might be. But this is the open standard for GPS navigation. Now the basic building block of everything you're going to see in the GPX file is a latitude and a longitude. And you can see a bunch of them here. This is a GPX file created by my um, Garmin smartwatch at the Grand Canyon. Um, what's important to know is these latitudes and longitudes are always based on um, the WGS84 map datum. And they're always in decimal places. So if you remember learning about latitude and longitude in school when you were a kid, you probably learned it's north or south of the equator, east or west of the prime meridian. It's in hours, minutes, and seconds. This is not that. This is a decimal equivalent of it. Um, and it's converted to the WGS84 map datum. Now, a map datum is just a way to map the Earth. The map's not a perfect sphere. So they have to come up with you know, ways to map the non-spherical shape of it. I'll go into more detail in the article on the website if you want to dig deeper. It's pretty dry, so I won't talk about it now. But what you need to know is that no matter what map datum that you're using on your GPS unit, the GPX file is always in this WGS84 format. Now, the other thing just to note here is that the decimal points will determine your precision or these, this point's precision. The practical limits of a, uh, a GPS, you know, on a, on a consumer GPS unit, you're going to get a GPX fix of somewhere between maybe 10 and 50 feet normally. Uh, and what that, what the equivalent is in these GPX decimal units is probably somewhere between four and six decimal points. But if you look here in this GPX file that actually came from a GPS unit, it's giving me you know, 10 to 20 decimal points here. And what that is, is it's just the GPS unit calculating your position and doing a mathematical uh, operation on that to get that position, and then just dumping all of the decimal points into here. So it's not actually giving me a fix down to this point. This would probably be pinpointing you down to an atom, um, but it is not doing that. It is dumping it in there. Now, it probably should just round this up to four or five or six decimal places. And if you look at some, um, some of the points here on this one, I can show you some track points. And here you can see they're down to, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six decimal places. That's more realistic for a consumer GPS unit. Uh, so when you're doing latitude and longitude, just remember WGS 84, no matter what, don't worry about anything past, I'd say, five or six decimal points in here. All right, so let's look at waypoints. Now, waypoints are basically just a single point that you record on your GPS or, you know, create on a computer to send to your GPS. And I'm looking at a GPX file in here of a waypoint. Now, just to break this down, this is saying that the document is XML. This is saying that it is a GPX file. Here is what they call metadata. And metadata is telling you information about the GPX file, such as uh, a link and name and some other things that you don't have to worry about. But waypoint is always marked with WPT. It starts with this WPT and ends with this WPT. So everything in between is a property of the waypoint. Now the waypoints latitude and longitude is inside of here. You can say here's a waypoint, latitude 33 point blah blah blah, longitude minus 117 point, and this is the information about it. Here's a time that was recorded. This is always recorded in UTC time, universal, what is it called, coordinated time. Um, there's a name, there's a comments, description, symbol, and type. All of these are optional. At the very minimum, you just need a latitude and longitude. These things just help you describe what the waypoint is, and you can set some of these on a GPS unit, some of them you can't, um, but there's actually 19 different attributes, and this is the documentation for GPX, and you can see here it says required, latitude and longitude, there's optional, um, 
information such as elevation. Elevation, just so you know, in a GPX file is always in meters. Um, magnetic variation. Most of these you don't use or won't use. Ones that are helpful are the name, comment, description, um, a symbol, a type. Usually type is a uh, type of waypoint is the, you know, depends on what you're creating it in. It could be a, you know, a stop, a water source, whatever it might be. There's some technical ones here. And you don't have to worry about these, and these are all online. And again, I have a link to this documentation. But really, all you need to know is to look for this waypoint right here, and you will see um, the information for a waypoint. And I'll show you in a second on a mapping program how to create a waypoint in a user-friendly way. But uh, if you want to look inside the GPX file and decode it, this is what a waypoint is. All right, let's talk about tracks now. Now tracks, in a, in a very simplistic way, is you can just think of them as a series of waypoints that are connected by a straight line, almost like a breadcrumb trail. Um, and if you look here, you can see that here is a track that I have, and it's just a bunch of different latitude and longitudes all string, strung together. There's no trickiness in between them. It's just point to point to point. It would be like if you're, you know, again, following a breadcrumb trail. Now tracks are marked with this track tag right here, um, opening and closing. And again, similar to waypoint, you have a name, you have a type, and some other information that's all in the documentation. And again, some technical things, magnetic variation, uh, different, different things that you don't have to worry about. The one thing that you will see quite often is this track segment. And track segments is essentially a way to group together a bunch of different tracks. And this is typically used if you have, say, a or multiple track segments are used. If you have a GPS unit and you track yourself for the day, you turn it off at night, you wake up in the morning, you track yourself again. Um, those will all be different track segments. And then within the track, you have a track points. And a track point, like a waypoint, has a latitude and longitude. Um, and also here you can see as the optional elevation, it has a time. And if you string together a bunch of, sorry, a bunch of uh, track points, you get that breadcrumb trail that I mentioned earlier. So track points, pretty simple. I'll show you what they look like on the unit in a second. But that's what a track point looks like or a track. Now one thing I want to mention too, you might have seen it when I popped over to this file, is something called an extension. If you look here, you'll see this extension. Now the GPX specification allows anyone, including manufacturers, to add these optional extensions to almost everything. You can add an extension to a route, a track, a waypoint, a track point, whatever the entity is like this within the actual GPX file. And extensions are specific pieces of data for a manufacturer um, or vendor, right? So if I made my own GPS unit and I wanted to save what color shirt I was wearing when I was hiking, I could have an extension called shirt color and put it in there. But in this case, we're looking at one that was created with a Garmin smartwatch and it's getting the air temperature and it's getting my heart rate, and it's right in here. And I can tell that because I'm just decoding this. And I have a link to uh, some of the Garmin optional extensions on the site. But what you should know about it is that generally you don't touch it. You don't have to create these on the fly. These are created by the unit itself. And um, they're generally not transferable between vendors. So if I took this GPX file and sent it to a I don't know, a TomTom Tom GPS or a, a SunTube GPS, uh, it's not going to be able to read necessarily my heart rate or the outside temperature because it's not looking for Garmin extensions, it's looking for TomTom Tom extensions. So those are extensions. You're going to see a ton of them in some of your files if you download them from, um, you know, the manufacturer website or from, this is from Garmin Connect. Uh, so just a heads up, you don't need to mess with them, but it does give you some more information. It does give you some more flexibility definitely in a GPX file.
All right, so let's look at a roots. So we talked about waypoints, tracks, and now roots. Um, this is a GPX file that has a simple root in it. And you can see here, it's surrounded by the RTE tags. That's what surrounds a root. Now, if a, bread, if a track is a breadcrumb trail of G waypoints, of little GPX points, a root is a list of points uh, that you allow the GPS device or computer to root you in between. So let's just start with the first concept, the root point. So think of it as you're going from A to B to C. In this case, we're going from, um, here's the name of the route, Sugarloaf Peak Hike. We're starting at the Ortega Oaks Candy Store. Then we're going to the San Juan Trail. And then from the San Juan Trail, we're going to Sugarloaf Peak. Now, when you send this to the device, obviously this is much shorter. It doesn't have any information in between these points. So when we send it to the device, it's up to the device to actually figure out what's the best way to get from point A to point B to point C. Um, and in order to do that, there's, there's a couple ways you can do it, right? You can do a straight point, but that doesn't really work well in the outdoors. It works out if you're in the water or something, but if you're, you know, hiking and you want hiking trails, it's just going to route you straight up the mountain or straight through the forest. So what you need is something called a routable map. Now Garmin Topo Active Maps are routable and that just means that there's a map and the street data on the map is known to the GPS device as a way to get from point A to point B. Um, so this, you know, Sugarloaf Peak, this latitude and longitude will lie hopefully on a routable track, sorry, at a routable map point, and we'll be able to, to go from this point to that point on the GPS. Now, routes, um, routes can be tricky, right? Because route is just going to take you the way that it calculates on the device. And sometimes they have options. You can go for speed or distance, or some devices have a popularity routing. It'll take you on the most popular trails. So what Garmin does is allows you to um, when you're planning a route, and, and not just Garmin does this, but a lot of them, but it allows you to add things called shaping points or via points. And this is the actual file that was generated by Garmin Basecamp, which is a free program we'll talk about in a second. Um, and here you can see I have the same information, but there's a ton of extensions in there. Um, there's some information about the track itself. But then under these root points, you can see here's the root point for the candy store. It has all these extensions and it has all of these root points. These are called shaping points. And shaping points uh, basically are hints to the GPS unit that you want to go a certain way. So it's kind of like a pseudo track point. It's telling the GPS unit, you know, if you want to go to Sugarloaf Peak, don't take the interstate, take these trails that um, you know the person specified when they're planning this route out and I'll show you how to do that when we're in base camp in a second or two but just know that a shaping point a root a, uh, a via point these are all kind of hints to the GPS to route you the correct way but again the GPS will do the route for you you have no control over which way to go um, so it's not always the greatest hike so when do I use tracks and when do I use routes? Now, let me just preface this with saying this is a personal preference, so you can really do whatever you want. And I'm sure lots of people do lots of different things. For me, if I'm planning a hike out, I know specifically what trails I wanna go on. I know the conditions, I've planned it before. So I will create a track um, so that I can ensure that I'm on the exact trail that I wanna be. And when I'm out on the trail, if I feel like I've maybe wandered off the trail or I come to an intersection, I'm not sure, I just look at the GPS unit and it'll give me a little purple line and I know whether I'm on that line or I'm off that line. And that's how I use the GPX track to navigate. Now, if you use a route, um, generally I don't use routes when I'm out in the field. The only time I might use a route is if I need to bail out. Let's say I need to get to a hospital quickly. I might look through the unit's uh, POIs or points of interest and just say, hey, get me to a road or get me to a hospital and then follow that to the road. It's usually when I don't care about the way I get there. For a track, I wanna be in a specific trail. For a route, it's just like, get me somewhere. Um, now, 
An exception to this is when I go for a bike ride or a run in maybe like a strange city, I will uh, do a route and it will give me turn by turn directions. It'll say make a left up here, make a right up here. And I'll generally use like a popularity setting. I'll say, take me on a popular running route 5K starting you know, at my hotel or whatever. So that's when I use routes. But in general, I generally go uh, with tracks for hikes and outdoors things. All right, so let's talk about actually opening these GPX files, using them, creating them. And I'm just gonna give you an overview here. I have links to all of the programs that I'm using in this video in the corresponding article. So make sure you go there. But uh, let's dive into it. Okay, so the first site I want to talk about is caltopo.com. You can see it's right here. It's a free site. It's a very cool tool. There's also paid subscriptions, but you don't need that to use it. You can change the map layer to all these different um, variations you have here. You can do Google Maps. It usually takes a second to load, but whatever you want to do, it's all here and you can add waypoints and create tracks very easily. So let's go ahead and create a track. We're gonna do line. And you can see this is uh, kind of handy. It all opens up here. So let's start from say this trailhead. And if you hover on top of it, you'll see it snaps to that track. And I click there and we'll call this Cal Topo Track and save it. You can see it's saved right here. I can export it and there's some different formats here. I talk about these on the website. Um, they're kind of, it's kind of a dry subject, so I won't go into it here, but we want the GPX and let's go ahead and export it. And now let's open it up with a text editor and look at this. So what CalTopo has done is it has removed all of the white space from here. And it did that to make the file size smaller. Now the GPS unit, when it reads it, is just looking for these tags. It doesn't care about the white space. That's just for humans. So what we have to do is actually um, essentially change it back to an indented file. So I'm just gonna cut and paste this. I'm gonna go to this website that takes the XML and beautifies it. Let's go beautify now. And you can see it just did that. I'm gonna cut and paste it again. And I'm going to go back to here and I'm just going to paste it over and save it. Now let's take a look. Here is the specification it's saying it's a GPX file. It's giving me the name. I named it CalTopo track in there. Here's an extension. It's saying um, for CalTopo, it wants the line color to be red. And then here are the track segments. So these are all of the breadcrumb points that we talked about earlier all laid out for me to follow when I navigate. Um, and it also spits out waypoints, but that is CalTopo. It's one of the most powerful tools you can get, um, and uh, I highly recommend it. But it doesn't create routes. Uh, so if you want a route, this is not the one to use. But for most of us, tracks are perfect, and you can use CalTopo. The next uh, cool tool, cool tool I want to talk about is Gaia GPS. Now there are free and paid subscriptions. I have a paid subscription because I love it. It's essentially the same as CalTopo, but it just has a slicker interface. Um, and instead of creating tracks, it creates routes. And it also has some better map options. So right here, I'm looking at a National Geographic map. Um, I can do cool things like I can in CalTopo where I can overlay the weather. Um, I can turn layers on and off. You can see there was the weather up here. It looks like there was no precipitation coming. So we're okay. Um, but I can do all these things here and I can do something called roots. So let's just do a root. We'll do this. And it gives me this handy dandy little elevation plot at the bottom. Let's go here. You can see it's created a route. I can do this, do that, and it gives me the elevation. Let's save it. We'll call this Gaia test. Now let's go to the detail page for it. And let's download it. Again, same culprits as before. 
Let's get the GPX file. And there's the GPX file. Let's open this in the text editor. And again, you can see it's smooshed up. So we're going to bring it into here. Beautify it. Bring it back. And boom. So unlike the CalTopo one that we saw before, this one has um, roots. So here's a root RTE, and here are the root points. And what that's telling the GPS unit is it's saying, you know, you can fill in the gaps in between these points, but these are the points to take. And it's kind of cheated because it's not really saying go from A to B. It's saying go from A to B, but take these specific points in between there. So it's like a track, but it's a route. Um, and you'll get guidance on your GPS again that will say turn right here, turn left here. So that's Gaia GPS. Um, if you want to try this, I have a discount. They've given uh, my readers a discount code, and that's on my gear page. But it's, it's a really cool tool. They also have a app, a smartphone app, so you can seamlessly kind of sync this to your smartphone and hike along a route or save a track on there as well. All right, Garmin Basecamp. People love this or hate this. Unlike the last two examples that I showed you, this is actually a program that you download to your computer. They have it for Windows and Mac. It's free. You don't need a Garmin GPS to use it on your computer. Uh, but if you do have a Garmin GPS, you can plug it in and access it and all the information on it um, over here. Now, Garmin Basecamp doesn't come with any useful maps, but you can download free open street maps, which is what you're seeing here. Um, and use them on here to plan. I have a whole video for that. Just go to the article and you will get a link to download these free maps. But here we are looking at Joshua Tree and we're looking at an open street map. One of the cool things here is I can change the details. So it's a little bit cluttered right now. So let's, let's take the detail down a bit. Maybe not that much. That's a little bit better. All right, so now I'm looking at some trails in Joshua Tree. I have some different tools up here. I can do waypoints, I can do routes, and I can do tracks. So let's start with a waypoint. And all you do is click that and um, whatever, it doesn't have to be anywhere. We can make it here and we can call it Base Camp Waypoint. We can change different things like this whatever we might want. We can add all kinds of notes into it. So it's a powerful tool. It's giving us a little bit more option wise here. Now, all of these fields aren't going to necessarily be read by any GPS, but if you have a Garmin, they should be. So let's do a route. So let's start from here and let's go, well, let's go somewhere different. Let's go here and you can see it's created a route for us. Um, let's do another point over here and there we go it's created this route now again it's not rooting us necessarily on the way we want to go I don't want to walk on the road but that's what a route does now you notice over here it's giving us a list of the points on the route and if I alt click on or option click on this or right click on a, with a mouse I can turn off this alt alert on arrival what that says basically is it, it's assuming this point in the middle was a shaping point. It's saying you didn't really want to go here as a destination. You wanted to go here as part of your trip from A to B. So I'm not going to give you an alert on arrival. For routes, it'll say, just like Google Maps, it'll say arriving at destination. Um, and you can turn this on or turn this off on the route there. So let's just um, don't alert me uh, and we'll call this we'll call this base camp roots okay so that's the route now let's do a track as long as we're here um, we'll go from here and now you can see I have to click point by point here to follow a trail let's say I want to go off trail I want to go across here to the stream whatever uh, there it is, and you can see over here, I'm getting a list of all of the things that I have. Track 1, 
I can double click on it. I can call it base camp track. Um, and again, I can edit a lot of these notes. I can, I can delete points from it. Let's get rid of this one. Boom. Um, I can change the color, whatever, whatever I want to do. So powerful tool. Um, you know, people either love this or hate this, but I find it pretty handy. And once I have these in here, I can plug my device in and just send it right to my device. Or I can export them to a GPX file. It's giving me some options here once again. But let's go ahead and do this. And let's go ahead and open this up in the text editor. And here it is. Now, we should have all three of those entities in here. So first, we have the waypoint. And there it is. And you remember I changed some of the things here to water hydrants. All that is in there. Here are some extensions that Garmin has added. Here is the root, base camp root, once again. And you can see here are the root points. And also, here are the shaping points that are in there, this optional GPX data that's telling my GPS unit to not take the road, but instead to take the trails that I specified. And then lastly, if we go down here, here is the track, base camp track. Um, here are the track points that are going there. And again, we changed the color of that to dark yellow, whatever that is, um, and it's right there. So that's base camp, very powerful tool. Um, at one point, Garmin was going to discontinue it, and then I noticed they started updating it again. Um, there is a website called Garmin Explore, which I think wants to be Basecamp at some point, but it is not, and it works with a lot of the GPS units, and it syncs to them. Um, but this is, uh, this is Basecamp. Now, we should also be able to load this file into another program like CalTopo, so let's do that now. All right, so here we are back in CalTopo. I'm going to hit Import, choose File. Let's go ahead and get that GPX file from Garmin. It's going to ask us, do we want to pull everything in here? Sure. And here you see they're on the side. So if I go to this track, here it is on the CalTopo map. Um, and again, I can change this to be whatever I'd like to do. Here is the Joshua Tree um, National Park Service map. I can change it to be whatever. Google Terrain. Here is the route right there. And here's the waypoints right here. So pretty cool. That's the whole beauty of these GPX files is that they are um, interchangeable and an open standard. So again, we can load them into any program, into any U, uh, GPS unit, and be able to read the data. All right, there's a couple more tools I want to show you. And just to be clear, there are probably hundreds, if not dozens, of GPS tools, ways to manipulate GPS data uh, online. I'm just showing you some of my favorites. Let's go ahead and create something in CalTopo from here. And let's go up the mountain. And we'll call this Mountain Time. Let's save it. Let's download it. But I have a bunch of track points in here. Um, now, this is basic and this is really all I need, but I could add more information to it. If I wanted to maybe create an elevation profile, I could do that. There's a website called GPS Visualizer that has a bunch of different tools that allow you to, um, you know, create GPX files, look things up. In this case, let's look up the elevations for it. So let's choose our file, convert and add elevation, output to this, and here it is, and we can download it. And if we open it up, you can see it has added the elevation in meters to each track point. 
The last one I want to show you is Google Earth. I do have some more that are a little more dry. Uh, links are on the website. You can explore them there. But Google Earth is fun because let's open that last file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now it's asking us um, if it wants to create line strings. We're going to say yes. It's also saying if we want to add um, altitude elevation to it. We're going to say yeah. Now KML file is a graphics kind of presentation file um, that Google Earth uses. It's a keyhole markup language. But here's that that's a track we just created in CalTopo. For some reason it brings things in twice, so we're going to just turn that off. We're going to turn the points off just so we have the path. And if you double click on it, it allows you to go in and zoom around and really kind of get an idea of the elevation. But how cool is that, right? And then we can spin around. So Google Earth is a fun one, especially if I'm doing a new hike that I don't really know. I will create the route and then I'll just bring it into here to kind of get an idea of um, what the effort's going to look like and, you know, how much climbing, kind of chunk it up into sections so I can mentally tackle it if I need to. So that's Google Earth. This is a GPX file. Um, very cool. And once again, just go to the website to the corresponding article. I have that. Uh, I have links to all of these programs, all of which are free um, there, and you can get them, play around with them, create your own GPX files, and be a master of your navigation domain. So that's the GPX file. Hopefully you feel more comfortable with it. You feel confident in knowing what it is, what to use, and when. Um, there's a full article on hikingguy.com that corresponds to this video that has all the links to the sites that I mentioned in there. Uh, it's also, if you're watching on YouTube, right underneath the video in the description. If you are watching on YouTube and you found this helpful, please hit that little thumbs up. That helps me out a ton. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. And also just a note, I don't just use a GPS and a GPX uh, track to navigate. What I do beforehand is I will check trip reports, I'll check the weather, a bunch of different things about a hike to make sure that it's safe and I know where I'm going, I know where the bailout points are. Uh, then I take paper maps and I use the GPX file and GPS uh, to kind of cross-reference. So if I come to a section where I'm not sure, I'm looking at the topo map and I'm not sure, am I in the right place? Am I going the right trail or whatever? then I'll check the GPX map. Or if I'm hiking and I just want to do a quick check-in, I'll bring it up on my uh, my Phoenix watch and just say, oh yeah, okay, I'm on the trail. Anywho, uh, hopefully this helps and I will see you out there.